All right, so good morning, everyone. Um, if you're joining us, you're here for the uh, self-grading Google Forms on quizzes. And my name is Pam Martino. I am a sixth grade teacher at William Penn. I currently teach uh, two language arts blocks and a class period of math. And in the past, I have also taught social studies. Um, so I'm hoping that you find this informative today. I'm sure that many of you have been joining in all of the other sessions that have been going on. So thank you for taking the time to um, learn something new and hopefully pass that on to your students. Um, just a couple of things before we get started. I want to show you um, places where you can go to ask questions. Um, so we're going to take you to the uh, website. This is the site that Brad has shared with everyone, um, the virtual PD sessions. And so if you go down to where you see the Google Forms self-grading quizzes, this is where you've clicked to join us. And then the very next column is where you can go ahead and click to ask questions. I have Colleen Veets with me and she is going to kind of monitor those questions. She's gonna jump in in case I happen to miss anything or can't see your questions as we're going through the presentation. Um, so hopefully we'll get to your questions as, uh, as we move through things, okay? Um, at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you over to um, let's go to the agenda. Here we go for our agenda for today. Um, so there's contact information and this will be posted in the resources section once our presentation is over. So if you have any other questions and you want to reach out to me, you're welcome to do so. Um, in general, what we're looking at accomplishing today for the self grading quizzes is to learn how to take a form that you've already created and actually turn that into a quiz. Um, go through how to randomize the questions and answers, adding answers to a quiz, adding feedback for students um, for some of the short answers as well as the open-ended que questions. Um, we're also going to look at some of the response settings um, and then how you can actually return all the quizzes once they've been graded to students. Um, so at this point, I'm going to take you over to just a, a form, a plain, simple form that I started creating last night just to kind of give you an idea of where you might have started. Um, and so this is something if you joined the, the Google Forms basics last night, you probably learned how to do this. Um, the form's obviously been titled, right? We've put it into a specific folder um, to make sure that we can get to it later on. And um, let me close that up. Um, given it a title here, first question, obviously we want to keep as our last name and first name so that we can record our students' responses. Um, and then once you have your form completely set up with your multiple choice questions, maybe some short response questions, and down at the end here we have some open-ended that we'll get to, um, we're going to go ahead and turn this form into an actual quiz. So I'm going to come up top here to, let me go back and do that a little bit more slowly, to the gear right next to the send um, button. We're gonna click on that and we're gonna come over to the word quizzes. And I'm actually starting all the way to the right um, here. So what I wanna do is make this a quiz. And what that does is it then highlights a lot of different options that allow me to take those questions and now assign points and provide feedback. Um, one of the options that you can use, and I would suggest this is something that uh, Google has come out with within the past couple of years um, to turn on the locked mode. And so what that does is it prevents students from opening other tabs while they're taking the quiz. Um, so I found that this is very helpful in terms of preventing students from cheating. Um, however, given that we know that students are at home, they may have another device that they could use to look up answers. So this is kind of one of our um, suggestions in terms of how you can monitor their honesty. Um, we just had another suggestion too from uh, one of our administrators about uh, attaching an honesty contract. So that's something that you could do with quizzes if you would like um, at the end. Um, in addition to turning on locked mode, you also have the option to, uh, in terms of when you're gonna release the grades. And so if I were doing all multiple choice questions, um, something that didn't require me to actually go back and grade later, I could click this button. Since I have some open-ended questions, 
on this quiz, I am going to choose the later after manual review. So this will allow me to collect all the quizzes, to grade them, and then to send them out to the students. The other things I want to take a look at are what the students can actually see once I have finished grading the quizzes. So do I want them to be able to see their missed questions? Absolutely. I want them to know what they got right, what they got wrong. Do I want them to see correct answers? That's completely up to you. If, however, you're doing something like second chance learning, you may want to uncheck that box um, so that students have the opportunity to go back and fix their mistakes. Point values, I would also suggest leaving on so that students have an idea of which questions are weighted a little bit more. Now, before I hit save, I am also going to move over to the presentation section, this middle tab here. And I have a couple of other options. So this first option here, the progress bar, is good if I have different sections to my quiz. For this case, I kind of kept it a simple quiz. There's really only one, one section that has all of the questions. So I'm not going to be worried too much about clicking that. If I want to change up the question order, um, so this kind of randomizes the questions, you can click on that um, that box, that option, and then that will shuffle the questions um, from one student to the next. Um, the button here show link to submit another response. Again, if you're doing a second chance learning or you want something where students continue to submit until mastery, this would be an option that you could check. For your confirmation message, you can just let students know that, yep, I've received your, your quiz and you should be receiving your score shortly. You might put a note in here to check your email for the upper, for the middle grades and um, high school. Okay. And then the last tab here, the general one, you'll notice that this actually was turned off because we had put locked mode on. So it's going to automatically collect the student's email addresses. And then in here, you can see that these other options have been grayed out because we've turned on the locked mode. So I wanna hit the save button. And then that gives me this little note up top to let me know that I do have locked mode on. Um, from here, uh, let me just go back and see if we have any questions. Nothing yet, okay. All right. So. Um, from, from this screen here, um, oh, I heard a little, little thing in there. Oh, thanks, Colleen. <laughs> okay. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of scroll through and show you what it's going to look like as we have questions in this quiz form. You'll notice when I click on my question, I now have the option to fill in an answer key. I also notice next to it that this question has not been assigned any points. So a few key things that we want to do. One, I want to make sure that any question I definitely want the students to answer is clicked on with the required button here. So normally it's defaulted in this sense where it would be gray. You want to switch that on and make sure that the student has to answer this question before moving forward. In terms of the answer key. Oh, let me go back there. So then we're going to figure out, okay, which one of these is going to be my answer? And let's just say I'm going to choose this one for right now. That will highlight code cogs as the answer to this particular question. And I'm going to make this worth one point. Okay. Um, when I'm finished, I just click done. And now you see that the answer key has adjusted so that this question is worth one point. We can talk a little bit more about this at the end if I know there are a lot of uh, math teachers that might have some questions about Google Forms and how do I insert equations and it's not very friendly. So these were some suggestions that had been brought up um, that we could share with you and give you resources at the end if you're interested. Um, so I took then that same type of question and now I have made it a, um, actually let me come back to this for one second, sorry. One more thing I just wanted to show you, these three dots on the bottom right hand corner next to the required button, this will also allow me to shuffle the answer options. So not only can I shuffle the questions, but I can also shuffle 
the answer choices here to kind of keep the students on toes and so that they are not necessarily cheating and copying from each other. Um, okay, so same question, but now what we've done is we've left it as an open-ended, uh, a short answer kind of a question. You'll notice here that it just does just say short answer. So these are for things that are maybe one word answers, two word answers. Um, and again, we still have the same options. We have an answer key. We want to make sure that we assign it a certain number of points. Um, and then we have the ability to put in our correct answers. So all I did was click on that little space there, and I'm going to start typing in um, some of the possible answers. As I'm doing this, the one thing I want to keep in mind is that this is extremely sensitive in terms of spelling, capitalization. So that if you do decide to use the short answer feature to help self-grade, you're going to have to think about all the different ways that your students might be typing in their short answer. So they may not all remember to put in their capital letters at the very beginning. Um, they might also not be very good about using the space bar. And so in some sense, you do have to be careful with using the, the short answer questions um, as you go through uh, these types here, just because of the, the numerous possibilities that students um, can, can use to type in, or the numerous ways that they can type in their answer. Um, one of the other things that I found in the past is that sometimes on the Chromebooks, students will have the um, international keyboard versus the US keyboard. And things as simple as an apostrophe can also mark their questions wrong. Um, so just want to be mindful of that as you go through your quizzes. Um, you can, at the very end, when you see the students' responses, come back and change answers that you feel like are correct. So let's say, for example, I had these four choices as my correct answers, um, and a student typed in code cogs without a space. Um, I can go back and change their question from being wrong to being correct and giving them the, the amount of points that they've earned. Um, but again, that's a, a manual um, move, and it's something that would definitely take a little bit more time to go through all of the questions. Um, you can also select the box that says to mark all other answers incorrect. Um, and so anything else that they would put in here as a possibility would not be accepted as correct and would be marked wrong. Um, you can leave that off if you would like. And again, that would just require you to um, go back and monitor the students' responses. Um, while we're in the short answer feedback here, well, you can also add comments for your students. And you can say something like, um, there are a variety of answers to this question. Um, if it's a question that students, um, a, a misperception, let's say, that you can anticipate as a teacher that students are going to, con to, to get wrong or that might be challenging for them, and you can anticipate what that incorrect uh, answer would be, you can also link to other sites or to other videos through these two buttons here. Um, so let me just save this for right now. Um, and we're gonna check mark all other answers incorrect. And click done. Okay, so that question is finished. And you notice that, remember, just that, that you see that asterisk, so that tells me that I've made that question required. Um, okay, so here's an example. What I wanted to do is to come back to this question to show you how, with answer feedback, you could provide feedback if the students do get an incorrect answer. And let's say this question just happened to be on um, factors and multiples. I can come out to YouTube and look for a video that has to do something with factors and multiples. Obviously, you'd want to preview it before you attached it, but let's just say that we've looked at this one. We think that this is okay. And what it can do is we can give students immediate feedback um, to help them in, in their understanding. 
And so if a student does get it wrong, it's going to direct them, oh, not feedback, check out this video, there we go, um, to a resource that would help improve their understanding or fix any misperceptions. For the correct answers, you know, we can just give them a simple, ah, can't type today, nice job or anything else, you know, you really understand the difference between factors and multiples. We could put that in there if we wanted to, okay? Um, so that, obviously you can then see your two different options that you have in terms of your feedback for your answers. Okay, um, here's another multiple choice one. Again, I wanna just make sure that as I click on the answer key, I can come over and select which answer is answer feedback. We're gonna cancel that, sorry. Correct the number of points. Okay, so for this question, what I did is I started off with a multiple choice question, and then I'm gonna use that to lead into an open-ended question. So in the first question here, students would pick a particular emperor, and then what I'd like for them to do is to give me their, explain their reasoning for their choice. And this question you can see is a paragraph question, so it's more of an open-ended question. Um, it's something that I want them to answer in a paragraph form, so I'm expecting complete sentences. Um, and the answer key itself, all I'm gonna do here is I might adjust the number of points, um, and I'm probably gonna leave it at that because this is a question that I'm gonna come back to and I'm going to grade manually. Um, to give you an idea of what that looks like, I'm gonna switch over to another quiz that I had my students complete. Um, so I am, this is in the part where students have responded and I am actually looking at the responses. So initially the screen that you guys were looking at were, was the question side. Once the students have responded, you're gonna be able to see the number of students who have answered the quiz under the responses section. And then at this point, I like to come to the question and just go to my open-ended questions. They tend to be the last questions on the test. Um, so I can just jump right to question number 12. And you can see that this is an open-ended question. My students range in their ability. So I have some students who write full paragraphs and they provide really great explanations. And I have other students who are on the, on the right track, but they might need some additional information as they go through. Um, and so the way that I've done that is I've gone in and I have given them feedback and then save it and I've assigned them their particular number of points. So this is what it would look like after you have gone through and graded an open-ended question. Um, okay, so let's come back to this. All right, one of the suggestions, I know Colleen uh, just gave this to me, and so I thought I would add that in there, is that at the end of the quiz, if there is anything else that the students would like to share with you that they know about the topic topic to demonstrate their understanding, um, to give them that opportunity. And then this question you can use, um, you can decide whether or not you're gonna assign it points, but I would leave it in paragraph format and let the kids have the opportunity to explain anything else that they might wanna share with you regarding that topic. That gives you some more insight as to their understandings, any misperceptions. Um, sometimes the open-ended questions can be challenging for them. And so they, they might have an idea or they might be struggling with what the questions are actually asking them to do. And so this is sort of their opportunity to kind of clarify their understanding for you. So that's just a suggestion that we have for you. Okay. Um, so this is our quiz. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the preview section, just so that, oh, this is what the quiz, kids would see. You can't, well, not that part. Sorry about that. Let me go back here. Um, all right. So once we have students who have actually taken the quiz, 
we can, as the teacher, come over and start to look at their responses. Obviously, no one has taken the quiz just yet, so that's why you see zero responses. But there are a couple features on this side that I do want to point out, namely these three dots over here. This first tab here will allow you to get email notifications as students finish. Now, if you have kids who are completing the quiz all in one class period, it's not necessary for you to click that on. If it's something as we're doing now currently through distance learning, um, it, it might be helpful for you to know uh, when students are completing your quizzes or, or formative assessments um, so that you're aware of the fact that they're coming in. Um, so I'm sure they're not all going to come in at the same, same time. The response destination, this allows you to put them into a Google Sheet or perhaps you've already started a Google Sheet and are collecting um, grades for a particular class. You can select an existing spreadsheet and then each quiz that you bring into that existing spreadsheet would be its own separate tab. Normally, I don't import my grades into a Google Sheet. I just kind of look at them here on the response slide. Um, and the other thing that's helpful is if you want to use this particular quiz from year to year, you can go to the, the last button here at the end of the year, or maybe it's at the end of the semester, and you can delete all the previous responses of your students, and then you can reuse this form um, from one year to the next. When you're finished and you want to make sure that students are no longer submitting their responses, you want to toggle this purple button here so that nobody else can then continue to submit their response. Okay, so we'll leave that on and open. Um, and I think at this point, I think that has taken us through all of the different ways that you can provide feedback um, for your students. Again, I, the one that I do really like in terms of helping your students and guiding them along the way is this ability of when they do get something incorrect to be able to direct them to another resource or another practice. Um, and so that is, again, just in the giving the feedback for the correct and incorrect answers. Um, I think that's about it. I'm going to just jump back over here to Colleen, see if there are any other questions. And, oh, okay. So looking at the, the chat over here, can you select more than one answer for multiple choice? Um, Colleen, feel free to jump in on this if I'm not correct, uh, but I am going to say if I did, let me change this, assign this to a certain number of points. Let's say that there are, for some reason, let's just go with the fact that there maybe there are two answers here. Yes, I can select more than one answer for a multiple choice question. Okay, obviously we know that that's not correct. Okay, and... I think that that is pretty much it. So if you guys, a um, couple other things I just wanna share with you. Let me go back here to our presentation. Um, and so we've kind of hit on all of these different learning targets. I apologize if we went too quickly, but you are certainly free to, work, to reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to help you with that. Um, in addition, there are a number of other resources and ways that you can use Google Forms. Um, this is the uh, Ditch That Textbook site. A lot of people um, in the ed tech world are referring back to this uh, site for resources. So that's one place that you can go to or Pensbury's own digital learning tools website, which looks something like this. And here is a bunch of information for you on Google Forms and a number of other video tutorials and, and things that you can do um, as you're using Google Forms. Um, so hopefully you guys found that helpful. And um, if we are all set, I think then we will wish you well and good luck in the distance learning era of the Pensbury School District.